Hello everyone, Morris here, and there are more balance changes for the pre-season 5 in Axiom Infinity Origins. So, let's just go straight into what are the changes. There are quite, you know, just 5 changes, I think, and well, actually kind of like 4. And so they're not that many changes, uh, but still, let's just go through them and see what's changed. First one is e-breathing. Um, actually, let me make it a bit bigger. Um, so yeah, e-breathing now uh, basically change from uh well here right so originally it was 35 attack gain shield equals to attack and now what has happened is that now it's changed to 50 attack and shield allies equal to 20 percent of the attack meaning if it's at the base level it will 10 shield uh, aoe shield basically um and still add one goo to enemy discard pile so yeah do check out my blog post for more details but basically uh, I do feel like it's an improvement, just because uh, before it was pretty bad, right? Gaining shield doesn't really do too much, especially if you're not the front. Uh, now AoE shield, it's only 10 shield, so it doesn't really do too much. Main problem is that it still only shuffle one goo, so uh, yeah, it's still pretty slow, I would say, unless you get to the mistake where you can get the charm to shuffle more goos. And the problem with Goo is really that a lot of the cards that shuffle Goo's actually are very more defensive, like they're more shields and stuff, and so it's going to be tough against poison. So that's my take on e-breathing. So this is okay, but not great. Okay, then we have Leaf Bug. For Leaf Bug, uh, now they change from 70 to 65, which is fair, it's because I, I it already at the base level grant two cocoon, and cocoon each cocoon stack give you eight shield already, and so originally it was basically it was 70 plus like eight shield. That's you know, quite a lot, All right? Now at least tone it down to 65, so effectively it's a 73 shield at the base level, which is not bad. Plus the two cocoon as well, right? So because the cocoon will stay unless it get this belt, uh, and of course, at, you know, once you charge it up to five cocoon, then actually it's like you know, 20 extra shield. So yeah, that could still be pretty significant, right? It'll be effectively 85 shield, and you know, 20 shield will keep coming as well. So yeah, Leaf Bug, still a good card, despite the Snide Love. And then we have Carrot. So it's probably a bit too small to see, but basically what's changed is that now it says whenever healed well, more than or equal to 8 HP by an ally, then Carrot gets plus 6 attacks. So the cap is still 90 bonus net attack, but uh, the key is basically that uh, now instead of plus 5, it's plus 6. So meaning, okay, if I scroll down here for the description, uh, it takes 15 procs as opposed to 18 procs to get to max 90 bonus damage. So a bit faster, but still requires 15 is still a lot of procs. Uh, the 8 is interesting because uh, now it changed uh, from 5 to 8. So to be honest, practically doesn't really make any difference other than, I guess, Bloodlust. So Bloodlust, if you play it with uh, multi-hit like Owls stuff, right, then uh, it actually heals for 7, or rather it steals, so it steals counts as heal as well. So it heals for 7, but that doesn't count as 8 now, and so this Bloodless Owl Carrot thing doesn't work anymore. But otherwise, it's kind of the same, so for the rest of the runes that I mentioned here, um, Gaia as well, uh, you'll see later. Uh, but yeah, Healing Force, right? and then we have Prehistoric Armor, Moonlight Thief, you know, Shell Shot, or Regenerator. Dominant Predator, that, those kind of runes will you know, uh, proc the carrot, which uh, could help, but without those runes, it's going to be very, very difficult to make it to, well, it doesn't have to be 90, but you know, make it to a significant amount of procs. So, uh, yeah, I still feel like it's going to be pretty difficult. You might as well just run Tiny Dino if you care about the damage. Uh, so another angle to look at it is that I, uh, I used to carry for the ramp because it still has, if I scroll up here, it still has the plus one energy fragments. So yeah, you can just use carrot as a ramp. And for example, if you have Moonlight Thief on your carrot, then the, the, you get a bit of bonus as well from the, you know, from the heal that procs the damage buff. So I think, yeah, maybe that is like one way of using it. Of course, I'm sure there are more ways of using it, but at the end of the day, 150 damage, it's good, but the amount of effort it takes might be a bit too much. 
Okay, then we have Gaia. Uh, so Gaia and Brace, let me just scroll up here. Probably a bit too small to see, but the only difference is that now all Ally Axis heals 2% of the max HP as opposed to 1. So if I just go to the description here, then basically uh, instead of healing 4 to 5 HP now, it heals 8 to 10 HP. Uh, and that's a lot better. So effectively, you can think of it as like a healing force from the healing, or maybe even Regenerator. Of course, the Regenerator only heals 1 Axis for 4. This one heals like maybe 24 to 30 uh, across the board. So of course, regenerator healing is still better. But of course, Gaia, the main uh, effect is about increasing the max HP. So yeah, I think uh, this could definitely makes Gaia slightly better. I don't know if it will be that much better. Still, I think it is, it is a good change. Um, yeah, maybe it will you know, compensate for the Soul Eater. Um, no HP loss, maybe. Uh, okay, so in terms of clarification, I do have like a few clarification I want to make about the you know, previous changes. And the big one is really HP loss, right? The dev is really pushing for HP loss as, I won't say it's a keyword, but effectively like a keyword. Uh, and that's because of the, actually mainly because of the new doubt mechanic, because doubt now is received. Um, well, minus 25% heal or shield. Um, but the key part here is here is HP loss effects increased by plus 25%, right? And the HP loss effects here means uh, basically effect, well, loss of HP due to effects other than direct attack. So it's like bleed, burn, griefer's wound, poison, stealing HP as well, uh, jinx. I think all those counts as HP loss, uh, actually including the Soul Eater. Soul Eater also causes HP loss, right? So HP, losing HP other than from direct attack basically contributes to HP loss. Um, yeah, definitely can check out the um, uh, Twitter post uh, for clarification. And uh, the final one is Purify. So Purify now, they, I think they changed the order in such a way that now they removed the curse card first from the draw pile and then discard pile then hand meaning if you have a curse card in the draw pile it will be prioritized if not then it will go to the discard pile first if you don't have uh, any curse card in the draw pile and discard pile then it will remove from hand so it definitely works a lot better because usually if you already have the curse card in hand it kind of already ruined your your draw so it doesn't really matter whether you remove it from hand already it'll probably get x out Anyway, um, yeah, so, and that is pretty much it in terms of the, yeah, uh, clarification and the updates. So, yeah, quite looking forward to uh, the patch, which should be coming up soon, uh, this week, hopefully. And then there will be some tournaments using the new patch as well, so we'll be excited to see what, you know, the community will bring together with, uh, yeah, what they will bring for the, I guess, pre-season 5 in terms of, you know, like seeing what, uh, decks or what teams would be good. Okay, so that's it for this video for today. Thanks for joining me. And yeah, here again is the all the changes for now. And uh, I expect there might be more changes, but who knows? Uh, yeah, let's see. Okay, that's it for now and see you in the next video.